This looks like a snake swimming through the water, but it's actually a bird and it doesn't catch its food. It stabs it with a spear. This is the Anhinga. You might have seen this strange and elegant bird in the wetlands of the Americas. It has a few nicknames, like the water turkey or my favorite, the snake bird. And its whole life is a story of incredible adaptations and one major trade-off. I'm going to show you how its feathers are both its greatest strength and its biggest weakness, and reveal the unbelievable way it catches its dinner. First, let's talk about why it's called the snake bird. Unlike a duck, which is super buoyant and bobs around on top of the water, an anhinga is built to be a submarine. Their bones are denser than most other birds, and their feathers don't have the waterproofing oils that keep a duck's feathers dry. This means when an anhinga gets in the water, it's not very buoyant. Its whole body sinks beneath the surface, leaving only its long, thin head and S-shaped neck visible. As it glides through the water, it looks exactly like a snake. This is not an accident. It's a perfect hunting disguise. And its hunting method is just as unique. The anhinga is a spearfisher. Its beak isn't hooked like a cormorant for grabbing fish. It's long, thin, straight, and has a razor sharp tip like a dagger. Using its powerful webbed feet, it will silently stalk a fish underwater. Then, using special muscles in its incredibly fast neck, it will strike like a snake, literally impaling the fish on the end of its beak. So the Anhinga has successfully speared a fish, but it's still underwater and it has a live wriggling fish stuck on the end of its face. How does it actually manage to eat its meal? This is where it takes a lot of skill. First, the Anhinga has to get back to the surface with its prize. Then, to get the fish off its beak and into its mouth, it has to perform a tricky maneuver. It will use a powerful flick of its head to toss the fish up into the air. It then has to catch the fish in midair and swallow it head first. It does this so that the fish's fins and spines fold down and it doesn't get stuck in the bird's throat on the way down. But being a master submarine comes at a very high price. Remember how their feathers aren't waterproof? This is their fatal flaw. After a successful hunt, an anhanga's feathers are completely soaked. And a wet waterlogged bird is a heavy bird. An anhinga um, that is too wet cannot fly. This leads us to their most famous and most recognizable behavior. After hunting, you will see an anhinga find a safe, sunny spot on a branch or a log, and it will spread its wings out as wide as they can go. It looks like it's proudly showing off its big, beautiful wings. But this isn't a display of pride. It's an act of absolute necessity. They have to sit like this, motionless, for hours, literally air drying their wings in the sun. If they can't get dry, they can't fly. And if they can't fly, they can't move to a new feeding spot. And they can't escape from predators like alligators or eagles. This period of vulnerable sunbathing is the trade-off they have to make for being such a deadly and effective underwater hunter. So the Anhinga is a true master of its environment, living a life of perfect balance. It's called the snake bird because of its sneaky, low-profile swimming style. It hunts like a spearfisher, stabbing its prey with a dagger-like beak. But this incredible skill comes at a cost, forcing it to spend hours every day just sitting in the sun, drying its wings, so it can live to hunt another day. If you want to learn about more animals that have to overcome incredible challenges to survive, make sure you subscribe.